Hi everyone. Welcome back to Surgery Tip Clips. Well, I've got a fun free project for you today. We all need at least one of these in our closet, if not multiples. And it's my Shapely Shoulders hanger cover. And you can see that it's kind of puffy. Um, all you need is a fat quarter of fabric. So it's a great stash buster a 22 inch zipper that goes along the bottom, uh, a hanger. And if you want to use one with the, the metal hook, that's fine. Or if you want to use a plastic one, whichever you prefer, you might just need the opening to be a little bit bigger for something a little thicker for the hook. And um, if you want to add extra cuteness to yours, you can always put a bow on it as well. So in the bubble wrap, which I use 12 inch wide bubble wrap. But I got the idea when I was packing up my wrap me ups, which are sweatered knits. And sometimes even with your other knit garments and sweaters that you might like to hang up, or even they don't even have to be knit garments. They can be special occasion outfits as well you can get some of those indentations that are hard to get out and um, this will eliminate it. We'll do this all on the serger. We'll do the zipper insertion on the serger as well. So let's get started. The first step is to insert the zipper on the bottom of our Shapely Shoulders cover. And I have drawn marks that are two inches from the zipper pull and marks that are uh, two inches from the bottom of the zipper down here. And what I need to do is align those with the marks on my cover and just put a little clip in to hold them in the meantime. And those extra inches are going to prevent the presser foot from bumping into the zipper pull and stop and keep my stitching nice and straight with that wonderful five millimeter piping foot. The machine is set for a four thread overlock. All tensions are on the normal or default settings. Stitch length is 2.5 and differential feed is on one. Your machine may have a differential feed setting of N. I have my cutting width on five for a narrow stitch because I don't want a lot of width in the stitch from left to right because it uh, the stitching may get too close to the teeth of the zipper. You'll see what I mean when I get uh, stitching on the zipper tape itself. You may trim off just a little bit of the zipper tape as well as a little bit of the fabric bottom edge and that's fine. I also have on my seam guide. If you don't have a seam guide that's fine. You can just keep your fabric aligned so that the knife is trimming off just a tiny bit of that zipper tape and fabric. I have the right side of the zipper. Let me just show you against the right side of the fabric and the zipper teeth are riding right along the inside or the underside of the channel in the piping foot. And I'm starting right up to where I have that mark that's about two inches away. And this is the beauty of having that extra length because if I can sneak it over here a little bit, the zipper stop, the bottom of the zipper is completely in back of the foot so it won't bump into it at all. I'll put my presser foot down. You can just let the zipper teeth ride right along in the channel of the piping foot and that's the beauty of it. It's a built-in guide. So let's get stitching and see how this does and you'll see just a little bit of the zipper tape and the fabric be uh, cut off and I'm keeping the zipper tape even with the raw edge of the fabric. I'm coming up to that other mark that's two inches away from the zipper pull, so I'll stitch up to that. And now I can raise the presser foot with my knee lift a little bit. Let me 
pull the zipper out. And I'm just gonna pivot off and chain off. And there's a little bit of excess right here on the zipper tape, but that's nothing because that will be cut off in the final part of it anyway. I'll cut my thread chain and I like to cut it fairly short so that it doesn't get caught by accident in the zipper teeth. But let's take a look at this from the right side. This is such a cool technique. I love this. Just like that. It's all perfectly even all the way down. I'm going to go over to the iron, give this a quick press, and then we'll do the same steps for the second side of the hanger cover. Here's a shot of the first side of the zipper and I've given it a quick press and now I'm ready to attach the second side and I'll see you over at the machine. For this side of the zipper on the second side, I'm starting at the top of the zipper. You can see the zipper pull right in back of the presser foot and I've got it all positioned and um, most of the time when I do a second side on the zipper, I usually open it. However, because there's no batting or foam or any kind of interfacing or bulk on the quilting weight cotton for the cover, I really don't think um, leaving it closed is going to present a problem. But if it does, we'll find out together. So let's give it a go. I'm putting my presser foot down and I'm going to start stitching the second side. Because I pressed that first edge also, I'm pretty sure it's out of the way, but it's always good just to do a double check just to make sure you don't stitch through a layer that you didn't mean to. Lift the presser foot and pivot the zipper out of the way. And let's take a look, see what we have. I'll see you at the table. Both sides of the zipper have been stitched and you can see how that excess length really helps keep the stitching nice and straight. And the other thing I'm happy about is that I kept the um, pattern aligned, which wouldn't be critical, definitely, on something like this, but it's fun when it does uh, stay exactly where I want it to. So next, we're going to start at our mark at the top and go down and around one side. We'll trim off this excess zipper tape on this side. We'll stop and then start again at the other mark and come around the other side and I want to make sure before I cut off my zipper um, pull that I unzip the zipper to the halfway mark. We've all done it and it's annoying when you do and time consuming to get it back on. So make sure you open your zipper. I'll see you at the machine. The only setting that I changed for this um, top part of the cover is I widened out my stitch to the cutting width of eight. You can put it on 7.5 if that's the maximum that your machine will do and that'll be fine. I am going to, I could leave my piping foot on, but I think I'll just change it out for the regular clear foot so that you can see. Okay. So here are my marks at the top and this is where the hook of the hanger is going to come out. Now, um, I put the marks wide enough so that if you have one of those molded plastic hangers that has the wider hook on it, you have enough room to um, get it through. I may start in just a smidge from there because I'm going to use uh, one of the hangers that is one of those velvet hangers, they call them. But um, I don't need quite as much space to get in there. So I may start in just a smidge closer on that. And again, you can just skim off the whiskers or none at all. I have a few pins in here, but again, I always say pin a minimum of an inch to the left of where you're going to be stitching so that there's absolutely no way that your um, knife is ever going to nick and get hit with that, um, with the pins. So let's get going on this.
And if your fabric starts to bunch as you're going around the curve, just stop, lift the toe of the foot, let it relax and flatten back out again. Now this is where, again, I want to just let that relax and I'm going to trim off this bottom edge so I don't have to worry about the um, zipper pull yet. But I do like to slow down a little bit as I come around here. I don't like to go over the um, teeth of the zipper at super fast speed. And I'm lifting my presser foot a few times just to make sure I'm aligned with where I want to be on the fabric. chain right off and cut my chain. I think my knife missed just a smidge of this so I can cut this off with my um, scissors. No big problem there. There. Okay. And I'm going to come around and do the second side and we'll take a look. I'm ready to start the second side. I have my zipper open halfway. And again, I'll just start a little bit inside that mark for my size zipper, but you can start wherever you want. It's not critical. And I want to keep those teeth close to each other so that it closes properly. And now my second side is done. So we'll go over to the table. I'm also going to just take a little double-eyed needle and tuck in these thread chains to keep it nice and neat and tidy. And I won't really need any fray check or anything else on that because tucking these in will keep them perfectly safe. So I'll just take that double-eyed needle, pop this in. Pull those through, and I'll do the same thing on the other one. And here is our hanger cover, and I have the zipper open right here, but you can see how nice and neat it is on the inside, too. I have a little opening. It's kind of hard to see it right up on top here. And uh, we'll layer the bubble wrap on the hanger and then pop the cover over it. I already have four layers of the bubble wrap on, but I just thought I'd show you how I did that. There's really nothing to it. I have my 22 inch length. All you need to do, this is a bigger snip than I really need. All you need is a tiny little snip, slip it right over the hanger cover. And again, you can put on as many layers as you want or that will fit inside the hanger cover. And uh, that's all there is to it. And then put your cover on and it looks neat and tidy. And don't bother cutting off any of this excess because that will help fill out the little corners of it and make the hanger cover look very nice. Thanks for joining me today. And you'll probably see this project again as we head into the holidays at the end of the year because it's a fantastic gift. It's quick to make. Once you've made one, you'll see how quick and easy it is to make. It would even be fun to do with holiday fabric or special occasion fabric. How pretty would that be? for um, bridesmaid dresses and satins and that type of thing. So there are a lot of different ways that you can make this and make it look very special. But thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll get back to you quickly. You can always email me, gail at gailpatrice.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Happy sewing and surging.